so this video is regarding power of magistrate to direct investigation at pre and post cognizant stages does magistrate have the power to direct an investigation to police where police is refusing to do investigation where police is refusing to lodge fir can a magistrate direct an investigation to police we know that police we know that state has three organs legislature executive and judiciary magistrate is an element of judiciary while police is an element of executive both are you know the organs of both are the members of different organs of the state all right so we have also studied the doctrine of separation of powers and the doctrine of checks and balances the doctrine of separation of powers simply says that each organ should independently perform their own works judiciary should restrict itself to just interpretation of law executive to the implementation of law and legislature to the enactment of the law they should not arrogate they should not you know usurp or take the functions of other organ on this premise the doctrine of separation of powers it provides for tight chambers within which these organs have to perform their independent works however we also have the doctrine of checks and balance both these doctrines can be reflected in our indian constitution checks and balance it says that there is no doubt that each organ has to perform its own work but while performing its own work it can you know check the functioning of other organ in a way when they are performing their own work they can check the functioning of other organ this is a system of checks and balances all right an example could be taken here from the constitution itself where if a supreme court judge or high court judge he can be impeached by the legislature he can be impeached by the parliament on the ground of proved misbehavior or incapacity all right so legislature it checks the functioning of judiciary judiciary checks the functioning of legislature by having the power of judicial review so both these doctrines can be found in our constitution and these can also be reflected in our various legislations which you know deal with day to day works of police and judiciary so here magistrate which is an organ of judiciary the main work of magistrate is to do inquiry or trial he has to do his application of judicial mind he has to perform application of judicial mind while the work of police is restricted to investigation both these chapters both these subjects can be found in various chapters this is chapter 12 of crpc and the the chapter relating to trial can also be found in crpc in one legislation itself so 
the main question here is if we apply doctrine of separation of power then it would mean that magistrate should not interfere with the work of investigation of police it's true the magistrate cannot interfere with investigation power of police or their working but where the police for one or the other reason it may be due to bribery or some other reason does not perform its work or does not even lodge lodges an fir can magistrate there interfere and order police to uh, directing the police to lodge an fir and start investigation so this is the question before us and till what stage can this magistrate exercise its power if he has any to direct investigation to the police whether it is only at pre cognizance stage or at post cognizance stage i shall come to the term cognizance later but let us first examine whether the magistrate has any power to direct investigation to the police or not see under the code crpc itself section 156 subsection 3 quite categorically quite specifically grants power upon the magistrate to direct an investigation to the police this power has been uh, specifically provided in there but the way this provision has been written by the parliament over there it raised serious doubts regarding its interpretation there were different interpretations by different high courts and there were different interpretations of 156 subsection 3 by different benches of the supreme court all right let us first advert to this bare provision so i have this bare act before me of code of criminal procedure and this is section 156 and with the third subsection of the code we are concerned it says any magistrate empowered under section 190 only a magistrate who has been empowered under section 190 may order such an investigation as above mentioned such an investigation means investigation relating to a cognizable case see crpc it makes it makes a difference between cases on the basis of police power to arrest in a cognizable case a police officer he can arrest a person without warrant however in a non cognizable case the police officer cannot arrest without warrant in the definition clause you can find under section 2 definitions of both non cognizable as well as cognizable cases and this is the what is written over there that in case of cognizable case police officer can arrest while in non cognizable he cannot another distinction in cognizable and non cognizable case is that in case of a cognizable offense a police officer he gets a right to investigate police officer has to mandatorily register an fir he can direct he can you know initiate he can start investigation without any order of magistrate but in a non cognizable case the police officer cannot lodge an fir he shall lodge a non cognizable report and thereafter direct the person direct the informant to the magistrate that he should lodge a complaint before the magistrate because this is not a case which can be investigated by the police so from this we can see that a magistrate he can direct an investigation only in case of cognizable offenses and not in case of non cognizable offenses so far 156 
subsection 3 is concerned. All right. Any magistrate empowered under section 190. We will come to this term later. That empowered under section 190. What does it mean? He may order an investigation relating to cognizable case. Okay. So if a person, he goes to a police station that some offense that he ha he's aggrieved by a cognizable offense and the police officer, he does not register FIR and does not, you know, initiate investigation. That person can present an application under section 156 subsection 3 to the magistrate and if magistrate finds out by reading that application that the information relates to a cognizable case it can direct the police officer to do investigation it can direct the police officer to do investigation this direction shall include an implied direction to lodge FIR because without lodging FIR he cannot do investigation here so even if the magistrate has not mentioned anything regarding lodging of FIR and has directed investigation this direction of investigation shall include an implied direction an implied order of lodging FIR so in this way magistrate can direct investigation but pertaining to a cognizable case now you may be thinking that what is the remedy what about the non-cognizable cases since they are not investigated by the police as a right all right since they are not investigated by the police as a right so the general procedure should be through complaints that magistrate uh, has to follow his own judicial process in case of non-cognizable cases for instance in defamation cases it is a non-cognizable case and no FIR can be lodged in regard to that but still the court provides another power under section 155 subsection 2 you can see that generally the police officer shall not investigate a non-cognizable case but still magistrate has the power to direct an investigation even in a non-cognizable case even in a non-cognizable case he has the power but this is not uh, technically a police case because no report under section 173 here is submitted to the magistrate this is an investigation given by the magistrate only to aid him that police should aid magistrate regarding collection of evidence no police report contemplated under section 173 clause 2 is made when this investigation culminates okay however when this investigation directed under 156 subsection 3 an FIR would be lodged which shall culminate into a police report one under section 173 clause 2 upon this police report the magistrate can take convenience in this case when this investigation culminates it becomes complaint you can see explanation attached to section 2d if an investigating officer you know investigates a non-cognizable offense and later on makes a police report it is not a police report it is a complaint submitted by that police officer okay so this was regarding the differences between cognizable and non-cognizable case we are concerned with investigation in cognizable cases only 156 subsection 3 since cognizable cases are more serious in nature in which the police officer has the power to arrest see expressly it has been written here any magistrate empowered under section 190 190 section 190 deals with power of cognizance
it deals with power of cognizance we shall advert to section 190 now so this is section 190 here cognizance of offenses by magistrate subject to the provisions of this chapter any magistrate of first class and magistrate of second class specially empowered in this behalf by uh, you know in this behalf under subsection 2 under subsection 2 CGM empowers any magistrate of second class to take cognizance so first class as a right can take cognizance second class subject to the empowerment granted by CGM if he may take cognizance of offense such cognizance offense can only be taken upon a a complaint of facts which constitute such an offense b upon a police report of such facts c upon information received from other person other than a police officer or upon his own knowledge that such offense has been committed so this is a su moto cognizance when something uh, some information he finds when magistrate finds some information by his own sources or through someone else who does not want to come as a complainant all right in such case he can take a su moto cognizance under clause c but these are the ordinarily methods taken by the magistrates to take cognizance under clause a clause b that is cognizance can only be taken upon a police report or upon a complaint now what do we understand by the term cognizance since a, a magistrate who is empowered under section 190 only he can take cognizance he can take a direct investigation now cognizance simply means when such police report or complaint comes before the police or, uh, magistrate he has to apply his judicial mind so this is the first thing first step taken by a judicial authority before that either police was doing its thing or the complainant all right so cognizance is the first step which a judicial authority takes it is application of a judicial mind it is a judicial note taken by the magistrate of what of the allegations or of the facts contained in the police report or of the allegations or facts contained in the complaint he shall take judicial note of the um, particulars contained in complaint or the police report accordingly he shall analyze the nature of those particulars whether if these particulars are proved tomorrow in the court of law would they prove any offense if the nature of particulars is such that if they are proved by evidence tomorrow during trial and by proving those particulars some offense can be made out some offense can be proved then he will take cognizance if the nature of the particulars is such that if they even if they those particulars are proved they then even then there shall be no offense that can be made out he won't take cognizance so cognizance is just judicial notice of the allegations or particulars contained in police report or a complaint i can give you past example here of sedition mostly what is done to you know to stop people from making high toned speeches all right to curb the protest the police police what it does it lodges sedition charges against the protesters now 
we know that Supreme Court has time and again said that every high toned speech is not a sedition. Mere use of hard words, mere use of harsh words against the government, mere use of sarcasm or satire itself shall not be sedition unless that speech or that thing, that literature incites people to commit violence. So till that time, the speech does not incite people to commit violence, no matter how highly it is toned, how harshly it is toned, it is not sedition. So where a speech is made by some protester, police lodges a sedition charge and files a police report. Even after perusing the police report, the magistrate would come to know that even if this speech is proved that the accused has made this speech, then no offense could be made out. So he should not take cognizance upon such police reports. Alright, so this is the power of cognizance. At the end, you have to peruse, you have to analyze the facts or the allegations contained in police report that if tomorrow they are proved, would they make out any offense or not. Accordingly, you shall take cognizance. So we shall come back to 156 subsection 3 now. So 156 subsection 3 simply says that any magistrate can direct investigation who has been so empowered under section 190. Alright. Who has been so empowered under section 190. It simply means that if something comes before the magistrate upon which he can take cognizance that is if some complaint or some police report comes before the magistrate he can direct investigation all right if stage is of cognizance taking cognizance now he will direct investigation under 156 subsection 3 only if the complaint or police report discloses a cognizable offense since it is only as a right that police can investigate a cognizable offense and lodge an FIR. So if he finds from the police report or the complaint that certain that any cognizable offense can be proved is if these allegations are proved all right he can direct investigation so if somebody who is aggrieved by the police that police is not lodging his fir it is not doing investigation all he has to do is file a complaint before the magistrate complaint is nothing but allegation that some person has committed an offense whether known or unknown and it is always made to a magistrate it can be oral or written in nature so when such complaint is presented and magistrate finds that information pertains to a cognizable offense he can direct investigation and police will have to lodge an fir and accordingly do the whole investigation all right in case of police report, even here, if FIR was lodged and police did it in investigation and filed a negative report that no offense has been made out. However, by reading the police report, the magistrate is of view that some offense has taken place and it has not done complete or it has done an unfair investigation. Magistrate can direct further investigation under 156 subsection 3 that go back and do your investigation further and bring the report again back to me accordingly I shall decide all right 
he can also investigate uh, direct investigation for uh, re he can also direct reinvestigation under 156 sub section 3 if he comes to know that the earlier investigation was vitiated by some you know instance of bribery or nepotism he can direct reinvestigation to under 156 3 reinvestigation shall wipe out the earlier investigation and police will have to start from the scratch so this is the thing due to this thing you know that any person empowered under section 190 any magistrate empowered under section 190 may direct investigation due to this expression coming under the code various high court judgments and even various benches of supreme court judgment the supreme court they delivered a view that the magistrate can direct this investigation only before taking cognizance that is before taking cognizance he can direct investigation so if once the magistrate take cog takes cognizance upon the complaint starts judicial process i told you cognizance is the first thing which a judicial mind does which a judicial do authority does so according to those judgments some of the names i can mention amrutul bhai patel brijankar nath i think there are various judgments regarding this point so according to them once a magistrate has taken cognizance the judicial process starts and this term empowered under 190 it means only at the time of taking cognizance he can direct investigation but not thereafter but not thereafter so this was the view all right that once the magistrate takes cognizance and issues process he cannot direct investigation however in 2019 itself the supreme court has clarified this point in Vinu Bhai, Hari Bhai, Malviya versus State of Gujarat. The Supreme Court said that this power under 156 subsection 3 it extends even to the stage of post cognizance. So till the time it says till the time the trial has not started it means till the time the charges are not framed a, a magistrate can direct investigation though they he may have taken cognizance now why this wide this much wide interpretation was given to 156 subsection 3 first thing supreme court said that that police does investigation and magistrate does inquiry and trial while trial is regarding adjudication and appreciation of evidence The purpose of investigation and inquiry is almost same or similar you can say. The purpose of both inquiry and investigation is to know whether the right person has been produced before the magistrate for trial. Whether this person who has been so produced by the police should be tried 
in even in case of investigation police find uh, tries to find out the accused who actually should be tried and while doing inquiry the magistrate tries to find out whether this is the right person who should be tried accordingly he frames charge and start trial otherwise he shall discharge him so the purpose is same if the purpose is same then why suddenly after taking cognizance after submission of police report the police the magistrate's power to direct investigation it extinguishes while police continues to have power to file supplementary report to do supplementary investigation under 17388 all right why this thing that police continues to have the power if purpose of both these two provisions have the same uh, is the same why police even after submission of police report continues to have the power of uh, uh, investigation while magistrate loses its power of direction of investigation second thing which they observed was section 2h definition of investigation now we shall also shift to where provision section 2h so this is section 2 and here we are concerned with section 2h investigation investigation includes all the proceedings investigation includes all the proceedings under this code for collection of evidence conducted by a police officer or by any person who is authorized by a magistrate in this behalf see even under 156 any magistrate empowered under section 190 may order such an investigation the term investigation has been used direct power is given for direction of investigation so that meaning of this term investigation has to be borrowed from section 2h all right so the meaning under section 156 of the 1563 of the term investigation has to be borrowed from section 2h okay now it includes all the proceedings for the collection of evidence done by a police officer or by person who is not a magistrate authorized by a magistrate emphasis has to be given to the term all all means every kind of proceeding done by a police officer for collection of evidence so every proceeding which a police officer does for collection of evidence is an investigation every here includes ordinary investigation to plus supplementary investigation see a police officer the police even after filing of police report though case may be uh, continuing in the uh, courts it continues to have the power of investigation police officer can continue to investigate the case further investigate the case if some person is absconding or if he comes to know that he can find certain additional evidence accordingly he can do supplementary investigation and for the same he shall file a supplementary report this has been given under 173 subsection 8 all right the ordinary investigation is which starts with lodging of fir and culminates under 173 subsection 2 all right so all here means every that is both ordinary investigation and supplementary investigation investigation includes both kind of investigation therefore under this term 156 subsection 
here also investigation the same as same meaning has to be borrowed it means it includes both investigation invest ordinary investigation as well as supplementary investigation hence even under 156 subsection 3 itself a magistrate can direct investigation after he has accepted the police report after the police report has been filed he can still direct the police to investigate the case and file a supplementary investigation in that behalf all right so this is the technical reasoning given by the court here see one thing you should know that under section 173.8 where is it uh, under section 173.8 you can see nothing in this code shall be deemed to preclude further investigation in respect of offense after report under section subsection 2 that is police report has been forwarded to magistrate and whereupon such investigation the officer in charge of police station obtains further evidence oral or documentary he shall forward to the magistrate a further report or reports regarding such evidence in form prescribed and the provision of subsection 2 to 6 shall as far as may be applied in relation to such report all right so here you can see it does not talk about any power of magistrate under section 173 subsection 8 it talks about power of police to continue the supplementary investigation to do supplementary investigation that nothing in this section though police report might have been filed the police officer continues to have the power to do further investigation okay so under section 173 subsection 8 it expressly not, uh, does not talk about the power of magistrate to direct investigation the power of magistrate to direct investigation after filing of report is present under 156 subsection 3 this is power of police all right from 156 subsection 3 he can order police to do their investigation under 173.8 from 156 subsection 3 he can trigger this power of police it is like a push button for magistrate under 156 subsection 3 all right in many earlier judgments though varying views were there that the power is in under 173.8 regarding the further investigation after police report is filed but this provision does not talk about power of magistrate to direct investigation it is power of police this thing has to be kept in mind all right so we have done second reasoning the third is the reasoning based upon sakiri vasu's judgment now Sakiri Vasu versus State of UP is a five judge constitutional bench judgment. Okay. In this case, the Supreme Court had analyzed section 156, subsection 3 in great detail and depth. So what was held in the Sakiri Vasu case was that 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 uh, a magistrate he can monitor investigation he can monitor investigation i talked about at the start of my lecture regarding doctrine of checks and balance this is somewhat it he can monitor investigation though he cannot interfere because investigation is prer prerogative of police he can act as a supervisory uh, mm, he can have a supervisory role whether to check investigation is going on or not under section 172 he can call diaries uh, see whether investigation is going on or not so he can ha have a supervisory role here now in this judgment it talked about this power 
of supervision of magistrate. This judgment said that power under 156 subsection 3 must be construed, must be interpreted liberally to the widest extent possible for the interest of justice. It said for interest of justice, the power of magistrate to monitor and investigation should should be liberally construed to the widest extent for the purpose of justice but in the earlier judgments they were not you know the benches supreme court benches or high court benches they were not adhering to this uh, ratio of sakiri vasu judgment in the earlier cases it was the view that magistrate has only uh, he magistrate has the power to direct investigation only before cognizance that is only at pre cognizance stage however after post cognizance he loses that power this was the view but police it can have power to it it has the power to do investigation if, before filing, filing of police report even after filing of police report now this if you see the parallel here you can see the difference between magistrate power and police power in the earlier view okay the magistrate power no one can say that it has been uh, liberally construed in those judgment they have restricted the magistrate power of monitoring investigation under 156.3 they choked it so in this judgment they said the supreme court said that we are bound by the view of sakiri vasu case therefore even after post cognizant stage he has the power to direct investigation so these were the basic three points on which this judgment was based this was technical point this was somewhat philosophical philosophical point this was also a technical point precedental point so now a magistrate has the power till that time the trial has not started till the time trial has not started he has the power in case of warrant case as soon as charges are framed trial starts in case of summons cases uh, when substance of acquisition or particulars of offense against the accused are told to accused and he is asked whether he pleads guilty to it trial starts so before these stages before framing of charge before disclosure of substance of accusation to the accused the magistrate continues to have the power to direct investigation even after taking cognizance so this was it thank you very much